All right, actually 10 o'clock, so good morning everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. It's Denise Ellsworth from the OSU B-Lab, OSU Extension, and OSU Entomology. Um, I just put in the chat uh, pod, sorry, <laughs> the chat pod, if you would enter your um, city of residence in there. I think it's um, um, going to be good to see where folks are from, so that'll also um, show us who's, uh, who's here ready to go. Uh, so for the next half hour or so, we're going to run through some orientation details about our upcoming VPS 19 class, a little bit about our website, about um, some of the assignments like our collection. We'll spend a few minutes on iNaturalist and, um, of course, answer questions um, that all of you have. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so as we go along, if you have questions, please um, post those in the chat pod. Um, I am uh, recording this session, so I'll post that a little later this morning for folks who weren't um, able to join us. Um, and somebody had their hand up. I can't answer questions um, that way, but if you want to put a question in the chat pod, you can go ahead and do that. So hopefully you're all getting in there, okay? Awesome. So I think you can already see from, um, from the city of residence, from those who are on this morning, we have a, a nice variety of folks, not just Columbus. We have some Cincinnati and Canal Fulton, and I know we have some Akron area folks, Hawk, Hawking Hills, so um, we're all kind of meeting in the middle for this year's uh, volunteer pollinator specialization class. So I'm really excited um, to be getting started with this program. So um, so here's uh, kind of what we'll be doing. I'm going to be talking about our website that we'll be using as our um, kind of our landing pad for um, all of our class information, maps, reminders, that sort of thing. We'll um, talk a little bit about our class sessions, including dates, and then about our collections, um, our use of iNaturalist, the um, citizen science app. We'll spend just a few minutes on our volunteer hours that are required as part of this program. And then, as I said, we'll see what kinds of, of questions come up. So uh, this program is known as, it's the Volunteer Pollinator Specialization Program. So 19 is our, um, is our year. We actually started uh, the first pollinator specialization class that I coordinated was in 2014. So I was formerly a county extension educator in Summit County, which is the Akron area, and before that in Stark County in Canton. And uh, way back in the 90s sometime, uh, I developed the idea of a specialization for Ohio. So we started with weeds, uh, we had an insect specialization, we had um, backyard and local foods um, and, and trees and so on. And so in um, 2012, I moved over to the Department of Entomology and said, mm, let's do specializations that are focused on pollinators. So, um, so this is our third cohort of uh, this program. We do have some returning um, specialists in the class, which I think will be a great addition. And, um, and then uh, we're going to have a, a 2020 class focused out of uh, the Worcester area. So we, uh, I'm, you may hear us. Um, called the VPS Central Group, since we are focused out of Central Ohio. Um, and I put up there the quick links to our website, which you've been getting some email reminders that take you right there, but if you want to bookmark um, or you know access from your phone or what have you, um, this is the, the website. There's a quick OSU link, which is the go.osu.edu slash VPS19. We'll get you there um, to the website that I'm going to show you. Um, you do need to put the HTTP colon slash slash in there. So um, if you just put the go address, um, it won't, your computer probably will not take you to the right place. Okay, but all of the emails that you will be sent through the site are also going to link you um, to that website. Okay, so let's look at the website. I um, noticed this morning that the normal colors weren't up there, so it may look just a little bit different than how you may have accessed it earlier this week or last week. Um, but this is uh, where all of our class information will be posted. And when I send um, out reminders or updates or you know notices, things you need to know about, I'll do posts on this website. And so all of you um, should be subscribed to this website. And if you received um, at about, I don't know, 9.15 this morning, um, Thursday morning, a uh, reminder about this webinar, then you are um, subscribed correctly to the website. It's not your fault if you're not subscribed correctly. We just need to go in and kind of dig that out and see what the, the issue is. So if you did not get a message um, on Thursday morning at about 9.15 to remind you um, to join the webinar, please email me and let me know because we can troubleshoot and, um, and make sure we get you on there. 
So I'll have um, resources, readings, um, some videos for us to watch, um, some PowerPoints from our past presenters, and that sort of thing will all be kind of um, centrally located here on our website. Uh, and so if you ever have trouble and you think you get, you, you've been kicked out, so you'll always be able to access the website, but if you're not getting the automatic reminders, um, you can just go in again. Um, I put the, it's really hard to see. You see the little red subscribe button down there? Um, but you can uh, manually subscribe to the website at the web page. Okay, so I did have a, a problem last year. Um, Beth, every month I'd put her back in and she would get kicked out. It was nothing personal, but for some reason um, our system didn't like her email address or something. So um, please be in contact me, with me if you feel like you're not getting um, the updates. Um, and right now, it, the, the site is not fully populated, so if you go in there and you click around, you're like, wow, there's some, there's some bones that need filled out here. And um, that's because I'm still putting together, you know, final details about our speakers and um, our class sessions and that sort of thing. So as we go, this will become, um, you know, full of our class details. So this is the kind of message that should have landed in your email box. And so every time I send a reminder or a post, um, you'll get a message like this. It'll give you a quick synopsis of the message, and then you click on the read more to actually be taken to the site to see the full post. Um, and so this is from last year's uh, class. We had a, you know, a similar but um, um, specific class site for the 2018 program. And so I would you know, answer questions, send reminders, um, list, um, uh, post maps of where we were going, uh, post PowerPoints from our presenters. So, um, you know, try to kind of a one-stop shop for details that we need to, to know for the class. I can, I can uh, embed the PowerPoints from our past presenters. So um, most of our presenters are great about sharing their information. And so I can post it on there for you to go back and look at later and that'll all be there. Um, you'll notice on the right of the website is a, um, a, a bar that has uh, details from the Ohio Bee Atlas. So that's just kind of FYI, um, but that's a way that you can see what kind of bees are being observed or identified uh, right now based on the Ohio Bee Atlas. So um, that, that's kind of a running um, tally, and we'll have a specific site for, uh, for Central Ohio that will help to, to feed, but this is the Ohio Bee Atlas. Uh, which has about 7,000 um, bee observations from across the state. Okay, so um, I am um, uh, about ready. I'd like to share all of our participant contact information uh, with other class members so that you can arrange carpooling if, um, if you want to do that. Or um, So if you don't want your contact information shared, and that would be just your address and email, um, that you uh, filled out when you completed the registration, um, just let me know. I'm happy to, um, to, to not include you in the list. I just need to know that um, you don't want to be um, added to that. So just email me. Okay, so our team for this year's class, um, I'm the coordinator, and then we have uh, four wonderful assistants that I'm really excited to have uh, on board. Um, so Mary, Lori, Alicia, and Jane are um, all um, certified volunteer um, pollinator uh, specialist. Uh, Jane is from the 2016 class. She's um, out in, um, lives in Stowe, but works at the Hiram uh, College Nature Center. And uh, um, so anyway, these folks will be um, our go-tos for class handouts, for questions that you have, They'll help get things set up and get things torn down at each of the class session, take attendance help with name tags, that sort of thing. So um, a shout out to Mary, Lori, Alicia, and Jane for um, their help with the class. And you'll definitely get to know them. I'll send all their contact information um, as, we, uh, as we pull everything together as well. So we have our class assistants. We also have some participants who are uh, what I'm calling returners. So we have um, uh, about 10 uh, returning DPSs, volunteer pollinator specialists, who are retaking the class. It's not that they failed, but they want to keep uh, keep learning and keep working on their BID skills. And they'll be a, a really great resource for everyone, including me, to have in the, in the class. So I'm happy to have them with us. 
And then we have um, 30 plus, 32 or 3 uh, uh, newbies, so folks who are new to the program and um, we'll, all be, uh, we'll all be learning together. It's one of the things I love about adult education that we all have so much knowledge and so much to share. So, um, so we have in total about 40 class participants plus about 5 um, on our, our, um, our class staff, and so we'll be a nice robust group at um, our different locations. So let's talk about our sessions, and here's a, um, a shot from uh, Holden Arboretum where we met um, uh, for a, a little bit of bee blitzing, bee uh, hunting last year. Um, these are some of our, our class participants. So the dates that were shared, I've shared them a couple times, but um, they're also on our website, they're up here for you. Um, these dates are set. So. I um, know folks are, are busy, you have a lot of things to juggle, and so you can put these dates in your calendar and know that these won't change. Uh, now that being said, you are able to, to come to the sessions that work for your schedule, uh, except for those February sessions. So as you recall, I've asked everyone to be there on the 11th and 12th at, um, at the 4-H Center, Chadwick Arboretum, on the, on the main campus, um, because that's really our, you know, our, our chance to start to get to know each other, um, to really answer fundamental questions, to, to build a good basis of bee biology and bee identification. So really want everyone to be there for those two days. And then from there, the, the dates are really flexible according to what works in your schedule. Um, most class members come to every session. There are different topics, different presenters, um, and somewhat different locations. So um, you'll, you know, you'll miss a lot if you're not there, but I understand with, with schedules you may not be able to be at every session. The one that may be confusing to you is uh, in June. So on June 11th, we'll be at Franklin Park Conservatory. But on um, June 16th through 22nd, it says B Blitzes across Ohio. So you don't need to save the whole week. <laughs> Those are optional um, B sessions. We call them B Blitzes. So they're just kind of informal chances to be out in the field or garden um, with our nets, with our collection vials, um, capturing um, insects, including mostly bees, together and, um, and doing some identification. So I'll have a schedule that will have those different opportunities. You can come to one or more if it works for you. If you're not obligated to come to any of those sessions. So um, just to help kind of clarify that. And I will go briefly through, you know, all of this again when we're together. I'll kind of cover the bases again when we're together in February at the 4-H Center. So you have to remember all these details. Okay, but those dates are set, so you can go ahead and, if you haven't already, um, add them to your calendar. So most of our sessions will start at 9.30, so that means if you can plan on being there at 9.15, you know, get your spot, kind of get ready. Um, our, our session will start at 9.30, and uh, we will end no later than 3 o'clock every class date, except a few exceptions that I'll get to. But if, if we're supposed to end at 3, we will end at 3, because I know we, you have drives, you have jobs, you have lives, and uh, I don't want to keep you longer than you're you know, planning on being there. So we will end on time, we will definitely start on time, but then there are a few sessions that will start a little early and go a little longer. And again, you'll get all these details again, but I just want to give you the heads up so you can add this to your calendar. So March 28th and also October 30th, our uh, larger sessions, that is, they're larger than just our class. They're open to the public, folks who want to register and attend. And our registration starts at 8.30 on those days, and the session actually ends at 4 o'clock. So um, there'll be more details coming about that, but, um, you know, kind of hold that in your, um, on your calendar. Um, that being said, you know, if, if you're running late one day, um, do come when you can get there. I know that, that life happens. So here we are with um, some of our specialists out in the field, a little late summer scene right, with that goldenrod. Uh, we will, most all of our sessions except our, you know, obviously February, March um, sessions, we will be outside and inside. So um, you'll want to kind of dress accordingly. And for each of our sessions, I'll follow up usually a week before, give you a heads up, a reminder, uh, maybe a, a short video to watch, or um, a reminder about our readings, and uh, a short list of what to bring if there's anything special you need to bring. Most of our classes, you'll be bringing your lunch, but there are some exceptions. 
um, and I'll detail those out for you, especially as we go. Uh, but um, so if we're you know if we're out in the field, uh, what you'll need to bring, um, I'll, I'll send reminders. So we will be. This is Franklin Park Conservatory. We will be meeting at different locations. Again, I'll send the map and the um, the room that we'll be meeting at uh, if we're at Stratford, if we're at Franklin Park, um, or some of our other um, exceptional locations. So we'll have uh, an assortment of presenters, and I'm really excited. I'm going to um, share two really uh, exciting presenters that we're going to have this year. But we will have uh, won't be just be my talking head the whole time. Uh, we'll have um, some some wonderful bee experts and specialists who will help to. Um, to teach us all about uh, bee biology and identification and, and pollinators uh, more broadly. And we'll be outside, so, um, you know, we'll come ready for the weather. Um, this was an, an interesting fall um, uh, rainstorm up when we were at Holden uh, several years ago. Um, and, of course, you know, walking shoes, comfortable shoes, um, ready for the terrain protection from sun, all that, that kind of thing. Okay, so on, uh, on March 28th, so we, we have our two days in February, and uh, again, I'll, I'll get us all up to speed again on this as we get closer, but I just wanted to let you know on March 28th, we'll be um, meeting at the 4-H Center for a larger program called the OSU Pollinator Summit, and the emphasis will be on um, protecting bees from um, all the threats that they're facing. And so you are already registered for that, but I'm going to have you RSVP for it. So I, I am the person who's coordinating that event, and that's how I can register all of you. Um, that is, I'm going to assume you're going, but I need you just to RSVP to me. And I will send out a post, um, like the example posts below. These are from last year. We did the same kind of thing with a, a bumblebee program and a farm um, habitat program. So I will send you a post and say, are you coming on the 28th? You need to RSVP and you need to make your lunch selection. So a few of our classes, including our orientation, so our February classes and our March session, lunch will be provided. Um, the, the reason it's provided, well, part of the reason it's provided on, um, for our orientation is that some folks are coming from far away from Cincinnati or, or you know, Akron. And it's pretty tough to bring a packed lunch for um, when you're going to have to stay overnight. So uh, we will have lunch provided in February and also at this pollinator summit, lunch will be provided. And so I'm going to um, ask you, you know, dietary uh, requests, you're vegetarian, you're vegan, you have allergies, that sort of thing. So you're going to need to, to fill out a, a quick little online reply that tells me, yes, I'm coming and these are my dietary needs. And I'll hound you if I don't hear from you. So we have everybody with a good lunch. So I um, suspect that some of you have had a, a package already this week. Uh, Keeping the Bees is one of our texts for the books, for the class. This is written by uh, Lawrence Packer. And um, our other text is The Bees in Your Backyard, which is co-written by Olivia Carroll and Joe Wilson. Um, so with Keeping the Bees, I was able to order uh, copies last week and individually have them mailed directly to you. And I'm going to send a reminder at the end of next week because you know, some of the deliveries said it would be fast and others said it would take 7 to 10 days. So I'll follow up in another week or so and um, ask those who have not received the book yet to uh, let me know so I can follow up make sure everybody gets their copy. And I'm asking you to, um, to start on it, to read chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Keeping the Bees before we meet in February. So you'll have a, um, you know, at least an introduction, a nice foundation to, um, and, and some of that reading out of the way um, uh, for our orientation session. The Bees in Your Backyard, you will get that book when we're together in person. I'll have those um, with me there at the 4-H Center. So at the OSU Pollinator Summit, da, 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 um, we're going to have Lawrence Packer there. Um, he's our keynote speaker, which I'm super excited about. He's a, um, a wild bee biologist from York University in Ontario, and he'll be giving our keynote and one other presentation in March at, um, at the OSU Pollinator Summit. And, and he's um, just an amazing biologist, so knowledgeable on, uh, on bees and really an 
interesting and, and uh, lively, um, lively fun person, lots of, of good enthusiasm for bees. So if you'd like to read more of the book, um, you know, if you've got a lot of time for reading and, and um, want to fit that in, we're, we're all going to read all the chapters eventually. And when we have our February uh, orientation, I'm going to go through um, the full schedule month by month, and I have chapters assigned for each month. Um, but you're welcome to read more of that if you want just a quick um, overview of the book before you actually get to hear and, and, and meet um, Lawrence Packer. But definitely everyone should be working on chapters one, two, and three before our February session. Okay, uh, so our other text, uh, The Bees in Your Backyard, co-written by Olivia Carroll, pictured here. So you will also get to meet um, Olivia Carroll. She's going to teach a session just for our class. So we'll meet together at the 4-H Center. Um, it's, a, it's a Saturday in August. And... Um, she'll be there, we'll have microscopes, we'll have pinned bees, you can bring your bees that you've collected, and she'll um, be working with us on um, bee identification. We'll do a little time out in, uh, out in the field that is our, out in the Arboretum, as well as in the classroom with Olivia, and she's amazing as well. I mean, it's just so um, knowledgeable, lots of bee experience, and um, uh, has a, a really wonderful style of breaking this information down into to pieces that uh, you know easy to comprehend. So uh, we've been able to bring Olivia to Ohio for the last couple years, and so just thrilled that she's coming back. And uh, we'll have her all to ourselves, a special session with our class and Olivia in, uh, in Columbus. Okay, so uh, some other facts about our class. We have a um, a movable library that uh, one of our assistants is coordinating. So every month Mary will bring uh, some books along. She has a, um, a checkout. You can borrow a book. Um, you can keep it as long as you are reading it. When you're done with it, you bring it back and you can check another book out. So rather than have um, you know, multiple class texts, you may have a lot of interest in, say, bumblebees or um, in a, a more broad um, view of pollinators. And so you can check out one of these additional texts to kind of take your learning um, to, to that next level. So I think we have eight or ten um, titles that we've added to the library. And um, Mary's working on her um, upper body strength, porting all those books um, to every class uh, to, to check them out for you. Okay, uh, the other, um, the main part of, of um, our class assignment-wise is uh, doing bee collections. So that, meant, that means either a pinned teaching collection um, and an, um, uh, a number of observations on iNaturalist. Or if you uh, opt out of doing a pinned collection, then you have more observations that you need to do on iNaturalist. So I, I think this is one of the places that learning from our returners is going to be helpful for our newbies uh, because several of our returning class members thought, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to do a pin collection. Um, I, I don't want to capture bees and pin them or I, I don't think I can figure this out to ID them. And, and um, it's totally fine with me if you decide you don't want to do a pinned collection. Uh, but many of our class members in the past have um, kind of changed their mind and said, oh, okay, I, it's, it's so hard to see these bees on the wing or in just a photograph that I, I want to be able to have this teaching collection that I can share with other people. So, um, so we'll be out when we're in class together, we'll be out in the field, we'll be taking um, pictures through iNaturalist. Um, you can be doing some collecting either on your own at, at home or at our different locations. Uh, I think every place, well, I'll let you know if we can't collect when we're you know, in, in a location, but most of the places that we're in for class will be able to do collecting. Um, I'll teach you how to bring a cooler with ice, and we'll have vials, and we'll, you know, we'll kind of have all the tools of the trade that you need to collect your bees, um, how to um, dispatch them humanely, and um, how to pin and label them so that you're making a, a pin collection. I think I left out, oh no, no there it is. Um, so this is kind of our goal. This is our teaching collection. Um, you'll all get one of these uh, boxes. They're empty. I'm sorry to say. Yours will have no bees 
in there, um, but you'll have the box um, uh, to put together with the card, with all those spaces for some of the most common bees in Ohio. And then um, your goal, and so it's not that you fail it if you can't, it, it's not that you fail the program if you can't uh, collect all these bees, because this is a work in progress. So your ultimate goal is to collect um, bees for these different sites, um, and for these different um, uh, examples. Um, and that may take some time. So some of the bees are um, only out early spring, and if we kind of miss that window, it's going to be a little harder to, uh, to find them. And so some of our returning class members are continuing to build their collection. They don't have a, you know, an insect in each of those spaces, and that's fine. It's still really valuable when you go out and work with a group or teaching a group of kids to be able to have this, to pass it around. Um, folks are really um, amazed to see the different bees, to compare the sizes and the colors, um, you know, to really see the, um, the creature there uh, in the collection. So the goal is to, to make a collection. Um, if you decide you don't want to do collection, then you're going to uh, gather more images on iNaturals. This is my kitchen counter. This does not to me to be your kitchen counter. I fortunately have a, um, a very uh, flexible, easygoing husband who <laughs> doesn't mind um, uh, some days when the counter is pretty full of bees and labels and uh, uh, other um, accessories. But anyway, we'll, <clears throat> we'll, we'll work together to, um, to pin, to label, um, to learn how to make good collections. So our goal is, um, if you decide to do the, the bee collection, so one collection, one pencil box full of bees, is the goal, plus 10 observations on iNaturalist. And I'm going to talk more about iNaturalist. We're going to spend a lot of time together learning about iNaturalist. Um, so 10 observations means 10 um, individual insects, uh, mostly bees, that you've taken pictures of and submitted to iNaturalist. And If you decide, <clears throat> excuse me, if you decide you don't want to do the pinned collection, then your challenge is to um, do 30 observations on iNaturalist. So <clears throat> you're out in your garden, it's a beautiful summer day, there are uh, several bees flying around, you see a bumblebee, or you're not sure what it is, and I'll talk about how iNaturalist is a great tool to help learn to identify things, including bees. So you take a big picture of that individual, maybe you get three shots of that one from the top, from the side, from the back, and that is considered one observation. So multiple images of one um, bee is one observation. So that goes up into the cloud and um, folks will help you to identify it. You can make your guess and um, it, it's really a, an amazing tool. It says no honeybees here just because um, so one of the things iNaturalist does is help us kind of document where these different bee species are across the state, and that's how we use our Ohio Bee Atlas. But we already know that honeybees are um, ubiquitous. I mean, they're in every county in Ohio, and so it would be um, a little too easy for me to say, go ahead and take 30, um, make 30 observations of honeybees. Um, it doesn't really show that much. I mean, it shows that I guess you know what a honeybee is, but it doesn't add a lot to the depth of knowledge about bees in Ohio. So I'm okay if you take, you know, you take a picture of a honeybee just to verify what you have, but I really want to challenge you um, to observe different bees. So that being said, this does not mean 30 different species of bees because that would be an incredible challenge. Um, that means 30, I don't know what this is, or I do know what this is, but it's not a honeybee. Okay, so you could have five different bumblebees, they could be three of them the same species, two, two other species, and, and again, we'll go over this um, ad nauseum, so it'll, it'll all make sense, but um, I'm not asking you to gather uh, observations of 30 different species of bees. These are just 30 different observations, uh, but not uh, really focused on honeybees. Ooh, somebody said that looks like a yellow jacket. We are going to go all over. Um, you'll be so good by the end of the year at um, what is a bee and what is not a bee. Um, that's really a, a good place for us to start. So this is our project on iNaturalist. This is the Ohio Bee Atlas. 
And we have about a thousand people who've taken um, observations of bees across the state. They automatically get uploaded into the Ohio Bee Atlas. And although this screenshot says 2,800 observations, we're now up over um, 7,000 observations right now. So it's a really cool tool to help us get a, um, a, a view of where bees are um, across the state. Um, and here's an example. So we were out on a, a bee blitz taking pictures of bees. You can capture a bee in your net. We'll have little vials that um, I'll provide for you. I'll get you, get you a starter kit of uh, collecting materials. Um, so you can take a picture of the bee in the vial and then you can upload it directly um, to iNaturalist from your phone or um, if you have a, a, a camera that can do that or you can take pictures and then later upload those observations to your computer to iNaturalist. So here in the blue is Denny Reiser. He was a class member last year and an awesome photographer. So he's taking pictures of bees. Um, here's actually Denny's observations on iNaturalist and just shows some of the different places that he was and some of the different um, insects, including bees, that he took pictures of and um, just really some wonderful um, photographs. But you don't have to be an awesome photographer, and we'll talk about how to take good pictures to help with ID of your bees on iNaturalist. So you don't have to do an artistic shot um, to, to have a good shot for iNaturalist. And it, it, as I said, this is just such a great learning tool because you can um, look at the pictures more closely and um, really get a sense for how to identify different, um, different critters, including bees, with iNaturalist. Okay, so, um, so that's about um, what we'll be doing kind of February through November. We'll be together basically once a month. We'll be learning inside and outside. We'll be collecting bees. You'll be collecting bees. Um, when you're at home and um, you can bring those to class, you're going to kill them first and bring them to class. We can do some pinning together, um, spend some time um, identifying bees, or you can be taking pictures of bees really wherever you are and uploading those um, throughout the class. And then at the end of the volunteer um, educational piece, so at the end of November, what we ask is that you give at least 20 hours of um, volunteer time teaching other people about pollinators and um, you have until September of 2020 to try to get those hours in um, but they can really begin anytime this year so once we start in February some of you may have a display going at a, a nature center or you know you're going to be involved in a, a bee walk or a, a master gardener um, bee habitat program or what have you and so you can start to accumulate those volunteer hours um, but they do need to be educational, so it's not really going out and weeding a pollinator habitat, although that might be important, but it doesn't really help us uh, spread the word. So, um, so those 20 volunteer hours, um, you really have quite a bit of time to get those in. And you keep track of those, so if you've you know, got some programs coming up this spring, you're just going to you know, put a page in your calendar or in a notebook, wherever you keep uh, your list, you're going to start to tally those volunteer hours. All right, so um, those were the, the points that I wanted to put, for, um, um, put, put out there for us. Are there some questions that you have, some things I didn't answer, or um, thoughts that occurred to you as we went along? Uh, this is Dean Babcock, um, and uh, Dean and Don are out, in, um, uh, out at the wilds in Cumberland, and we were actually doing some research along with Karen Goodell who is an OSU biologist. Um, she, was, she has some pollinator habitat out there, so Dean's holding up one of our quadrats. We were collecting information about flowering plants and bees um, out there at the wild. So Dean is one of our returners. You'll all get to meet Dean uh, as, the, as the class unfolds. So it looks like um, Diane is typing. Anybody else have um, questions? Uh, okay, so uh, Diane asked, do volunteer hours include just the time of the presentation or the preparation for it too? And probably similar if you're a master gardener or an OCVN or um, your prep time is included in that volunteer time. So I know it takes a lot of time to put a PowerPoint together or to, to you know, gather materials or create posters for displays. And so 
Um, so that does count for your volunteer time. I love it if you're able to share that too. You share a you know, PDF of your program or a PDF of your handout so that other people can benefit from, um, from what you've learned. But yes, I am, those, those hours do count. I hope you're excited about the, the class. It's going to be a great year. I don't know if you got two inches of snow last night like I did, but um, before we know it, things will thaw. Um, we'll start to see some of those early bee observations on iNaturalist, um, starting kind of from those, those of you who are down in Cincinnati, uh, Catherine and others, uh, Katie, you're, you're going to start to see them first. Those bees are going to work their way up um, through central Ohio and then up to me up in, um, in Stark County in northeastern Ohio. So um, although it seems pretty cold and snowy, it won't be too long before um, those bees are out there. Okay, so it doesn't look like others have questions, but um, if you'll do me the favor of emailing me questions that you think of later. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this, Denise, what about, um, because I'm guessing if you have the question, others have the same question. And so um, I can address it through our, um, through our website uh, and make it everyone's mind at ease. So I, uh, one of the, the next emails that you're going to get from me is about uh, lunch preferences for uh, and what to bring for our February session. Um, I will mention that at the 4-H Center, um, it is free parking. I know parking is crazy on campus, right? Um, but you don't have to park at a meter, you don't have to pay to park, but there is a special parking pass. Um, that I've already attached actually to our website that I will remind you about it and I'll try to bring a few paper copies in case you, you know, put it didn't work or whatever. Um, but you are able to park by the Schottenstein Center with a parking pass in your windshield um, on your dashboard. And so um, there is pretty easy parking there at the, at the 4-H Center. All right. Well, it looks like uh, we're, we're, um, we're good. We're good on time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And um, um, again, be sure to email me with questions. Look for my early emails with um, your, your lunch preferences so I can get the caterer all set for our February class time. And um, can't wait to see everybody in person next month. Thanks so much for, for joining us.